Aloha! You're watching F5 On Demand. I'm Peter Silva, Technical Marketing Manager with F5, and we're in our International Technology Center here in the heart of London. It's within the, what's called the city center, right? You were saying? I'm with Sharif Qureshi. He's a product management engineer and one of the two fellows that are managing our International Technology Center here in London. We just had a little brief walkthrough and I, I'm, I'm just amazed by this place. And I, I know, I absolutely know that you guys will love the little tour that Sharif is about to give us. So come along with us. So I think we're going to head right. into that area. Right. Straight into the center. All right. So, so now, so the opening shot was actually right off the elevators to the right. We we're in front of the reception area there. To the left, which was kind of off camera, was this, this glass area. And then behind the glass is all of the equipment that we have showcased right as we get off the elevator. So I noticed we have some of our partner devices, the info blocks, our wonderful Viprion. So what, what's going on in this, in this front area? So if we look at the front area here, we can see that the two outer extreme cabinets here are for our administration of this data center. Um, and it covers, it includes uh, NITAX for our fast storage, uh, info blocks for our DNS administration, uh, the other side here, if we look at this side, um, this is uh, HP chassis, so we can spin up virtual uh, VM instances. Nice. Okay. Um, in the middle here, we can see uh, a number of our F5 equipment, yep. uh, and we we'll use this for uh, demonstrations, proof of concepts, performance testing, that kind of thing. So, you know, to allow our customers to come in have a good play with our equipment. And I notice we have pretty much every single one of our models. We have the 1600s, yeah. the 3600s, 3900s, our ARXs, okay. the new 1100s, which are pretty cool, and even the Vipreon chassis yeah, the and 89s. Yeah. There's only one that's not, not in this rack at the moment, and that's the 2400s. Oh, yes, and of course. The, um, the customers are getting them first, so we'll get them soon. Beautiful. Yeah. So, so this is the front part. Let's take a look, go a little bit in back, and see how all of this is powered, cooled, and, and essentially managed, really, right? Yeah. So we're going to go back that way. And now the first thing I noticed when we walked in is these, these tanks that almost look yeah, like helium awesome. tanks to build, you know, the, the clown balloons, yeah? Exactly, yeah. They do stand out, don't they? <laughs> um, yeah, this is for our fire suppression for this data sensor area. Okay? Um, yeah, they're quite expensive, so we're hoping they're not going to go off, especially if we're in them. <laughs> but yes, uh, if we have a look here, here um, in terms of cooling, um, this is done slightly differently to traditional data centers. Uh, most data centers that you see in the UK have the air coming up from underneath the floor um, and coming into cabinets. Those cabinets are usually closed, you've got fans in them. And that draws the air. And that's the classic design of most data centers, the raised floor and bringing yeah. the, the cooling from underneath so heat rises and so forth, right? That's right, yeah. And we're doing it slightly differently here, in so far that we've got this grill here, and you probably noticed around the front, when we were talking around the front, you could see a grill there. Uh, and this is effectively the cold area. So we're pushing air into this cold area, in the front and the back, uh, and essentially, if you look at the equipment here, uh, and these racks, you can see that we've, we've sealed it from bottom to top. Yep. Uh, the only way air can be channeled through into the warmer area is through the equipment. So the equipment is drawing that air in and pushing it into the hot room. So if we take a walk in there, you yeah. should notice a temperature change. So the, so the only flow is right through the equipment. Exactly. There's no little holes or space. It has. It's probably jumped up maybe five, ten degrees. Yeah. It's a little bit warmer. Now. And um, if we um, if we come through further, because uh, one of the other interesting things about this centre is that everything is managed. Um, so if we left that door open for about two minutes or so, we'd have got an alarm because it's very important that we keep the cold area cold and the hot area hot. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of drawing that air through. Uh, we're using simple convection to keep it circulated. So 
you'll notice the grill in this area is higher. Yeah. So hot air rises, obviously, and of course it circulates through back out into the airplane area. And so instead of having the air circulate, well, actually more like this way, yeah. it's going exactly. that way. Right. Much more right. efficient, I would imagine. It is definitely much more efficient. And in terms of the badges, so Ross Draper, our camera guy, another PME who's helping us with the video here, has his ID, you have your ID, and each of the doors you need a badge to get through. Now, within F5, when we talk about um, how we want to deliver applications, it's a lot of times user context and you know taking the information. And I'm, I'm guessing that each time you badge it even, it identifies that it's yourself and or Ross yeah. that are coming yeah. through that door. Only myself and Ross are allowed through. There's a couple of other PMEs um, and a boss, of course, yeah. uh, <laughs> that has access to this area. Wow. And even you were showing me earlier, one is the... Um, yeah. So if we look at these um, uh, power uh, connectors here, the red ones are for uh, UPS, uh, and the other two are just for uh, additional power for these racks. Uh, one of the other interesting things about these cabinets, insofar that, I mean, having a look at it right now, you can see that there's a lot of capacity for growth. Yep. Um, traditionally, uh, in data centers, you'll find that uh, they will run these racks to about 2 or 4 kilowatts. Uh, we're intending to be able to run it up to 10k, so we would look to fill these top to bottom yeah, with equipment over time. Nice. So it's going to be kind of noisy, but I think it's also will be interesting yeah, to let's go move into the cooling into the area. Back area. Okay. I'll show you what that's like. Now, one of the interesting things is that this uh, technology center has only been, been open for about three weeks. So you guys are getting one of the first looks at one of our newest uh, data centers, really. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So now we've got to go around the other way. Yeah, we've had um, a few customers turn up so far. Um, and they've all been uh, suitably pressed in the centre. <laughs> or blown away in the States. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm, I'm a very British reserve. Oh, oh no, I love it. Exactly. So let's step into the HVAC. All right. Okay, okay we might be here. having to yell in here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll have to raise our voices a bit more. So this is the HVAC area. Uh, you can see there's three air units here, and by my hair you can probably see that it's moving around a bit more. Yeah. I'll see on yours, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. uh, We've only got one running at the moment. Um, they are cycled around just to ensure that they're all in good working order. Um, and I'm not sure if you can see it very well on the camera, but um, essentially the two outer grills here, uh, and then you've got this raised grill that you can't see yep. uh, that comes up into this area and so all the hot air is above us and that all goes back into the air conditioning. And the two, obviously those two grills keep that air going, going that way. So it's circulating around. And I, as we walk in here, the first time you walk in here, I, I maybe not point that way because you won't hear me, but the, the, the blast is coming from below, but the way they have this design is that when you get when you get real close to this, you know, I can only feel the, the wind, the wind. It is wind, really. It's the, you know, the, the wind down, down at my ankles, and as I pop up on the Drury Lane stage, I then actually feel it all the way up to my chest and, and hair. And then we got the little, uh, you know, I was UPS mentioning UPS earlier, you yeah, have the UPSs have gotten, at least for data centers, a lot more compact, huh? <laughs> Talk about consolidation. Yes, they're a long time now. So now we've seen a lot of the, the back-end equipment, technology, and so forth. We're now going to take a look at some of the, the general meeting areas and other kind of uh, not features, luxuries maybe, of the uh, London Technology Center or International Technology Center. So we're going to head back out that way, right? Yeah, sure, let's go. Okay, so, so are you guys impressed yet? I, I know I am. <laughs> so if we step into the uh, main meeting room, this is called the EBC. Uh, this is where we have uh, initial customer meetings. Um, it's all 
technology driven. Uh, it's all about technology here. So um, if you look at the system in here, it's all managed by that uh, BDA. So if you want to touch that screen. Okay. The decibel level has dropped about 20, huh? Yes, you've noticed that the sound is, is much more, well, it's very quiet. Yeah. 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 Uh, so let's click on Media PC. Media PC right there. Okay. Whoa. And it magically appears. So in, in here, uh, we do our general presentations. Um, we've got good audio in here, so uh, if you need to do video presentations, you can do that as well. Whiteboard facilities allow you to do your drawings uh, and discuss technical issues in a little bit more detail. And then the other thing we were playing with uh, earlier is, you know, they got the little tabs here. You got your video tab for the you know, podium to do presentations, the table, laptops, what have you. But then also the lighting. You were mentioning, right, that based on on the type of activity you want to do. Exactly. So we're, we did video and then that changed so, the light so configuration. The lighting around here will change based on what type of uh, presentation you're doing. So if you want to watch the video, uh, then basically the, the inner cloud lights will go dim and the outer ones will come on. If you want to do a presentation uh, just as a person, then all the lights come on. Yeah, so, uh, so it varies. It's quite the button, yeah, you really can't tell it's, on video. It's very right? bright today, so it's hard to tell all that. But yes, certainly it, it makes a big difference in the signs up there. And right outside here um, is Old Broad Street. That's where we're located here in the city, is 30 Old Broad Street. So if you're familiar with that location, uh, that's where we're located. And there are, I think, uh, maybe two more areas we want to share, right? Yes, let's kind of look. Okay. Right, this is the... Um, bar area or reception. Yep. So here uh, we can also uh, run uh, presentations, um, but usually what we do is we use this, uh, leave this video running. And not, not, to, not to minimize the data center or the, the sales conference room, but we kind of saved the best room for last. Is sure. that right? That's right. <laughs> uh, one of the other things that we do on this video wall is uh, greet the customers. And I think um, if we pan around, we've given you a welcome. Yeah, I was uh, tickled by that. <laughs> and it's also nice to be promoting our, our various partners. Yeah, when I walked in, I was like, oh my god, they have my name up there. That's so cool. Thank you. Great. Great. <laughs> so if we come along here, there's two other rooms. Uh, this is a slightly smaller meeting room. Um, works very much the same way as the other one, just slightly smaller, um, but does the same thing. We've got all iPad controlled, um, so we can do exactly the same kind of thing. Very nice, very nice. Um, and the other one? We go through here. And then just so just so you guys can see that you know down there is just you know a little bit more office space, the kitchen area, and the facilities for customers, partners, and you while you're Absolutely. here at work. Yes, yes, we need to eat. <laughs> so we step through. I remember when I walked. I want this to be yeah. my office. This is the telepresence uh, set up between. Uh, here in London to Seattle. So we've got the equivalent of this in Seattle. Yep. Um, and it allows us to do uh, a couple of things. Um, from the point of view of uh, customer visits, uh, if they need to talk to the execs, um, then they can. They can come here, we can have John Cannon on the other side, and they can have those meetings. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that we can use this facility for is uh, for performance testing. In oh. London, we've got a limited amount of yeah. Uh, but in Seattle, we've got the Ixia system. Uh, so if customers have a requirement for performance testing, it can be built in Seattle and then broadcast, presented to here. So customers don't need to travel to Seattle to go to here. They can see it all here. Each one of these desks has got I know, a one presentation for little, little magical. Uh, so we can bring up a, a screen uh, and then they can see that demonstration. Um, directly. And then that, then we also have, uh, I noticed all the way down the end here. Yes, we've got a, we've got a smart board. Um, 
This is pretty cool. It, what we intend to use this for is uh, interactive whiteboarding between the two areas. So uh, essentially from here, you can draw something on the, screw, on, on the board here. It will get presented to these monitors down here. So if I just click that switch there. Um, that should allow you to see that whiteboard section. Yep. So we got so, it. Yeah. So we so got it there. here on the on the on the monitor so section. So you want to do an artwork? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll just do the. Uh... Yeah. Let's do the artwork. Great. So you should be able to see that on the um, monitor there, so it's presented there. And the intention is, is to be able to uh, display that in Seattle, uh, but this is an interactive whiteboard. Right. So from Seattle, they can actually draw on top of this as well. So between the two sites, you can actually come up with uh, a what? Um, yeah, just a, a working a, diagram or whatever you're diagram. working on. Yeah, exactly. so that it's all interactive. And then, That's right. and then you, you were showing me earlier, which is also kind of cool, you can you can save it and even hit email, right? Yep, and you can send that to yourself. And then send it to... Yeah. You can send it to yourself now if you want. So if we just um, put that there, bring that up, and just bring yourself here, you can type your name. Five. There you go. Enter. Enter. And it's gone. Oh, it wow. go to you. So Beautiful. check your email and it should be there. And obviously the same functionality if I'm, you know, sitting at my desk and I want to, you know, email it from any of these monitors and... You can't email from these monitors. Oh, you can. No, I so, see. So these monitors are not touch screen. They are just simply there for display. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, that's actually, that actually is much better because then if, you know, I'm going to sneak an email to myself <laughs> in this picture, then it's all, you know, yeah, managed from right. one location. It's that's kind of cool, right. actually. And... If, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, Ross, maybe come around a little bit. I, mean, I don't know if you caught it when we when we came in, but the the folks would you know sit in this location, and then you can't really tell with the camera, and you don't necessarily need to get that close. But we got we actually got four cameras. Don't touch it. I'm not. No, I got. He's like, <laughs> don't touch it. No, I know. <laughs> we got four cameras in there. And then each one of these screens, now it's, let's see, it's uh, like five in the morning, four in the morning in Seattle, so it'll be dark there. It's dark there, it's not worth presenting. Yet. Yeah, so each of these would then come up with the, with the various people in Seattle that, that our customers or yourselves are meeting with. And then we got our, the uh, hanging microphones up top. Not only is this room, the sound is kind of, it's nice in here. It's an immersive telepresence environment. So uh, basically those screens are HD. Um, so when you bring up a connection, um, the, the people appear very clear. Um, there's a lot of detail that you can see at the other side. So um, certainly when I've had a couple of meetings here, when they brought in their coffee cups um, or, or drinks, you can actually read the writing on the drinks themselves. So it's that detail. You can really see it. And then well. right. the microphones up here. Um, allow for directional audio. So if I'm standing over here or sitting over here, um, it will appear at the other side that I'm talking from this side of the room. So when they say immersive, it, it is totally immersive insofar that you really do get absorbed into having that meeting. Um, the other thing that we find um, uh, that is good about these uh, meetings as well that are held in here, um, that you don't feel as tired looking at the video because um, but those aren't LCD screens or monitors that it basically light is reflected onto those panels mm -hmm. um, and you can stay in here for hours um, just having your meetings you don't feel that tired and you, you actually are like sitting in meetings for hours and you hours know, <laughs> you know we've had a number of meetings <laughs> in here. Well, right? it, no but we have had a number of meetings <laughs> in here and you just don't you, you just feel like you're actually talking to people yeah. and getting on yeah, I mean, there's right. always yeah. Yeah, situations where, where, especially opening a new a new facility such as this, I'm sure, sure you spent you know a number of hours. We spent a number of hours in there and talking to people remotely, uh, discussing issues, working through problems, yep. um, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, this has just been fantastic. Good. 
Go ahead, you please. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Our International Technology Center in the heart of London, serving all of the EMEA region, right? Exactly. Based in, I, I purposely came over here so we could have the London and the F5 logo back there. So, Sharif, thank you, thank you. so much for sharing this, this amazing facility okay. with us. If this is an area or um, if, if the Technology Center, you're an F5 customer or, or someone who would be just very much interested in visiting the Technology Center, you know, call your local F5 office, maybe talk to your local sales rep and and arrange something That's and the then they'll yeah. work with you guys to then uh, make that happen, right? Yeah, and you're very welcome. So for Sharif and Ross, our great camera guy, I'm Peter and we're with F5 Networks. Thanks for watching. Thank you.